Hi, uh, this is Informed TV 100, and we are continuing to celebrate Women's History Month. So, our person of the day that we are recognizing is Fannie Lou Hammer. Uh, Fannie Lou Hammer was born October 6, 1917, and she died in March 14, 1977, was an American voting and women's rights activist, community organizer, and a leader in the civil rights movement. She was the vice chair of the Freedom Democratic Party, which she represented at the 1964 Democratic National Convention. Hammer also organized Mississippi's Freedom Summer along with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee known as SNCC. She was also a co-founder of the National Women's Political Caucus and Committee Organization Recruit, which created to recruit, train, and support women of all races who wish to seek election to government office. Hammer began civil rights activism in 1962, continued until her health declined nine years later. She was known for her use of spiritual hymns and quotes and her resilience in leading the civil rights movement for black women in Mississippi. She was extorted, threatened, harassed, shot at, and assaulted by racists, including members of the police while trying to register for and exercise her right to vote. She later helped and encouraged thousands of African Americans in Mississippi to become registered voters and helped hundreds of disenfranchised people in her area through her work in programs like the Freedom Farm Cooperative. She unsuccessfully ran for the U.S. Senate in 1964, losing to John C. Stennis and the Mississippi State Senate in 1971. In 1970, she led legal action against the government of Sunflower County, Mississippi for continued illegal segregation. Hammer died on March 14, 1977, age 59, in Mount Bayou, Mississippi. Her memorial service was widely attended and the eulogy was delivered by U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Andrew Young. She was posthumously inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 1993. Hammer was born as Fannie Lou Townsend on October the 6th, 1917, in Montgomery County, Mississippi. She was the last of the 20 children of Lou Ella and James Lee Townsend. In 1919, the Townsends moved to Ruleville, Mississippi to work as sharecroppers on W.D. Marlowe's plantation. From age six, Hammer picked cotton with her family during the winters of 1924 through 1930. She attended the one-room school provided for the sharecroppers' children, open between picking season. Hammer loved reading and excelled in spelling bees and reciting poetry, but at age 12, she had to leave school to help support her aging parents. By age 13, she would uh, pick 200 to 300 pounds of cotton daily, while living with polio. Hammer continued to develop her reading and interpretation skills in Bible study at her church. In later years, Lawrence Guyot admired her ability to connect the biblical uh, exor exorcisations 
for liberation and the struggle for civil rights at any time. And um, she moved, her and her family, they moved uh, to, in 1944, uh, they moved to uh, the Marlow Plantation. And they remained there for 18 years. Hammer and her husband wanted very much to start a family, but in 1961, a white doctor subject Hammer to a hysterectomy without her consent while while she was undergoing surgery to remove a uterine tumor. Forced sterilization was a common method of population control in Mississippi that targeted poor African-American women. Members of the black community called the procedure a Mississippi appendectomy. The Hammers later raised two girls they adopted, eventually adopting two more. Dorothy Jean died at age 22 of internal hemorrhaging after she was denied admission to the local hospital because of her mother's activism. Hammer became interested in the civil rights movement in the 1950s. She heard leaders of the local movement speak at annual regional conferences that was held in the Mount Bayou, Mississippi area. The attendees of the yearly conferences discussed black voting rights and other civil rights issues black communities in the area face. She became a good friend of RCNL founder and head T.R.M. Howard. So she led a life of, of voting activism. On August 31st, 1962, Hammer and 17 others. This was 1962 attempted to vote but failed a literacy test, which meant they were divide, they were denied this right. On December 4, just after returning to her hometown, she went to the courthouse in Indianola to take the test again but failed and was turned away. Hammer told the register, you'll see me every 30 days until I pass. On January 10th, 1963, she took the test a third time. She was successful and was informed that she was now a registered voter in Mississippi. But when she attempted to vote, that fall she discovered her registration gave her no actual power to vote as her county also required required voters to have two poll tax receipts. This requirement had emerged in some mostly former Confederate states after the right to vote was first given to all races by the 1870 ratification of the 15th Amendment to the United States Constitution. These laws, along with the literacy tests and local government acts of coercion were used against black people and Native Americans. Hammer later paid for and acquired the requisite poll tax receipts. As an example of how black citizens were disenfranchised in Mississippi, Hammer said she had never heard of this until 1962 that black people could register and vote. As an example of how black citizens were disenfranchised, uh, Hammer began to become more involved in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. After these incidents, she attended many Southern Christian leadership conferences where she sometimes taught classes and various SNCC workshops. She traveled to gather signatures and petitions to attempt 
to be granted federal resources for impoverished Black families across the South. In early 1963, she became a SNCC, SNCC, a field secretary for voter registration and welfare programs. Many of these first attempts to register more Black voters in Mississippi were met with the same problems Hammer had found in trying to register herself. After her attempt to vote, Hammer was fired by her boss, but her husband was required to stay on the land until the end of the harvest. Hammer moved between homes over the next several days for protection. On September 10th, 1962, while staying with friend Mary Tucker, Hammer was shot at 15 times in a drive-by shooting by racists. No one was injured in the event. The next day, Hammer and her family evacuated to nearby Tallahatchie County for three months, fearing retaliation by the Ku Klux Klan for her attempt to vote. Uh, A quote from Fannie Lee Hammer. I guess if I had any sense, I'd have been a little scared. But what was the point of being scared? The only thing that could do they could do was kill me, and it kind of seemed like they'd been trying to do that a little bit at a time since I could remember. On July 9, 1963, Hammer was returning from a voter's registration workshop in by the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. In Charleston, South Carolina, traveling by bus with co-activists, they stopped for a break in Winoma, Mississippi. Some of the activists went inside a local cafe but were refused service by the waitress. Shortly after, a Mississippi State Highway patrolman uh, took out his billy club and intimidated the activists into leaving. One of the group decided one of the groups decided to take down the officer's license plate while doing so. The patrolman and a police chief entered the cafe and arrested the party. Hammer left the bus and inquired if they could continue their journey back to Greenwood, Mississippi. At that point, the officer arrested her as well. Once in county jail, Hammer was taken to a cell where two inmates were ordered by the state trooper to beat her using a baton. The police ensured she was held down during the fatal beating, and when she started to scream, beat her further. Hammer was also groped repeatedly by officers during the assault. When she attempted to resist, she, she stated an officer walked over, took her dress, pulled it up over my shoulder, leaving my body exposed to five men. Another in the group was beaten until she was unable to talk. A third, a teenager, was beaten, beaten, stopped on, and stripped. An activist from SNCC came the next day to see if he could help, but was beaten until his eyes were swollen shut when he did not address an officer in the expected uh, differential manner. Hammer was released on June 12, 1963. She needed more than a month to recuperate from her beatings and never fully recover. Through the incident left profound physical, psychological effects, including blood clots over her left eye and permanent damage to one of her kidneys. Hammer returned to Mississippi to organize voter registration drives, including the 1963 Freedom Ballot, a mock election, and the Freedom Summer Initiative the following year. She was known to the volunteers of Freedom Summer as a motherly figure who believed that the civil rights effort should be multiracial in nature. In addition to her Northern guests, Hammer played host to Tuskegee University student activists Sammy Young Jr. and Wendell Paris. Young and Paris grew to become profile activists and organizers under Hammer's 
Chulich. Young was murdered in 1960 at a gas station in Macon County, Alabama for using a white's own restroom. Uh, in 1964, Hammer helped co-found the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party in an effort to prevent the regional white Democratic Party's attempt to stifle African-American voices and to ensure there was a party for all people that did not stand uh, for any form of exploitation and discrimination, especially towards minorities. Following the founding of the MFDP, Hammer and other activists traveled to the 1964 Democratic National Convention to stand as the official delegation from the state of Mississippi. Hammer's televised testimony was interrupted because of a scheduled speech that President Lyndon B. Johnson gave to the 30 governors at the White House East Room. But most major news networks broadcast her testimony later that evening in the nation, giving Hammer and MFDP a much exposure. This is Inform TV 100. We are celebrating Fannie Lou Hammer. She was a housewife who was one of the most dedicated and crucial activists in the in the Black history in America for voting rights. We want to celebrate. Fannie Lou Hammer, uh, she was beaten, she was jailed for trying to help people to vote. And she will, she has gone down in history as one of the most influential people uh, in the civil rights movement. And uh, this is Inform TV 100. Please hit the like button. Please hit the notification button. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you for watching and celebrating with us on Inform TV 100. This is part one of Fannie Lou Hammer a civil rights activist who was very instrumental in gaining uh, the vote, the freedom votes for black people, uh, for minorities. She was a housewife and she became an activist. So please, please vote. This is another example of people who put their life on the line so others can enjoy the freedom to vote. Um, one account, which I read, uh, where Fannie Lou was beaten so bad uh, from going to one of her meetings that it left her permanently injured, one of her kidneys damaged, and she never really recovered uh, from this beating that she received in jail from law enforcement officer. Inform TV 100. God bless you. This is, we're celebrating Fannie Lou Hammer, Women's History Month. Uh, take care of yourself as well as others. Know your numbers. Uh, be well. God bless you. And uh, bye for now. Look for the Inform TV 100 a news. Take care and bye. Bye for now. And as Joe Madison says, what are we going to do about